Hello and welcome to the accounting buddy. In this channel our focus is on financial accounting, auditing and everything taxation. Now if you're interested in these topics, do hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to approach audit questions, the do's and don'ts and the common mistakes that you should avoid. As an audit partner, Bob has been asked to perform the role of statutory auditor for Nike Pty Ltd. The, ma the, ma the major shareholder of Nike is Dan, who is Bob's father. The required is that <coughs> we discuss the above situation in terms of the code of professional conduct. Now, the first thing that we should look at here is what the question requires us to do. We are supposed to look at the code of professional conduct of an auditor. Now, right off the bat, we can tell that there is going to be a problem here because Dan and Bob are related. So typically, this is how you would answer such a question. It's a solution right here. So the solution states that if Bob takes on the role of uh, auditor for Nike PTY LTD, LTD, he will be compromising the fundamental principles of objectivity in terms of the code of professional conduct. Here's our first point there. Bob may overlook fraud and error due to familiarity, a familiarity threat because Bob and Dan are related. They are close family friends and possibly self-interest threat to him because the, ma the major shareholder is the father, right? Here's another point. It would be in his best interest to protect and direct, to protect direct family as the father there may also be an intimidation threat because the father might, you know, like, son, you can do this to me. This is our business. This is how I make my living. Uh, this family relationship is uh, too close for him to be independent and there's no safeguard available that can reduce the threat to an acceptable level. According to the Code of Professional Conduct, Bob shouldn't take the role of the statutory auditor. Whew, what a paragraph. Now, this is something you definitely have to avoid this is a no-no right this is something you should avoid when we answer audit questions you need to put them in a point form always avoid the paragraph the the, the points that have been made here are relevant but they are too long they are too wordy you do not want to be answering like this especially in an exam where time is a limited resource we need to structure them in point form and let them look something like this so in, sol in solution two still the same solutions but in a more organized manner a paragraph form if bob takes on the role of an auditor for nike ltd he will be compromising fundamental principles of objectivity in terms of the code of professional conduct correct since bob's father is the majority shareholder of nike this can create the following threats there's a familiarity threat, right? A self-interest threat. Since Bob is also related, since Bob is related to Dan, since he's a father, and this is in contravention of the code of professional conduct, right? So now, this is how you would want to structure your questions, but there's still a problem with this. We already know that we are dealing with uh, the code of professional conduct, so there is no need to bring this up. Right. This just increases the wordiness of the, 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 the paragraph and the answer. Right. But in terms of the format, it's one paragraph, one answer, which is good. The communication is clear. The examiner can tell exactly where you're going with the argument. Now you're building the argument. But we can also, this is good, especially if you're doing this in an assignment where you have all the time in the world. There's nothing wrong with this. Do note, if you can look back at the previous solution, it's the same thing but written in a presentable way. So this format is fine if you're going to be doing this in an assignment. But if you're in an exam situation, you want to get the most points out using the least amount of time. Brings us to solution number three, which is even shorter. The relationship between Bob and his father may impair his objectivity as the auditor of Nike. The threats may be a familiarity threat self-interest threat, an intimidation threat. There are no safeguards that can reduce the threats based on the above contravention 
of the code bob shouldn't take the role do note here that we didn't say based on the above contraventions to the code of professional conduct no we do know that we're talking about the code of professional conduct so we shorten it out for code because you've already gotten your points across so in a typical exam this would have been marked correct these are some good points if it's one mark per point so always make sure that your paragraph includes a point and also always write them in point form to avoid paragraphs because it's going to cripple your answers you i mean your marks you will not get the full mark so this is one of the things that you should look at when answering audit type of questions in an exam now guys i'd like to thank you for watching this video i'm gonna see you on the next video Nah.